This notes page is for absolute value inequalities, and I have the steps up here. Uh, first step, you want to isolate the absolute value, and then you're going to write two inequalities and the rules. The first one, you take the expression out of the inequality and write the first inequality unchanged. And then we've got a little extra work to do because it's an inequality. And so you're going to have to choose either words and or or. If the inequality is a less than or less than or equal to, it's an and, and you're looking for the intersection of the two solutions on each side. If the inequality is a greater than or greater than or equal to, you're going to write or, and that means you're going to be looking for the union, which means if it's a solution in one, it's a solution in both. Then uh, you write the first inequality, remembering that to change the inequality uh, direction. So what that means is you want to change in between, you want to, the second inequality, you want to change less than to greater than, and so forth. Um, and then you want to change the sign of the number after the inequality. So if you have a 4, it'll be a negative 4. So let me show you because it's easier when we do an example. Okay, so first example, you have to isolate the absolute value. And so I wonder if you can guess what a lot of people do. They might do negative 8 minus 3, which you can't do. You have to remember um, you have to undo what's being done to x in the opposite way that it's things are happening to it. So we want to isolate that absolute value. That means we're going to treat it like the x that we're trying to uh, get by itself. And this is negative 3 times that, and then negative 8. So the first thing that happens is negative 3, and the next thing is negative 8. So when you're trying to undo what's being done, the first thing you want to do is add 8 to cancel out these negative, this negative 8. That gives you negative 3 times the absolute value of x minus 1 is, less, is greater than or equal to negative 24. And then you want to get rid of this negative 3 that's being multiplied by dividing by negative 3. But there's a lot going on, so don't skip steps. This is an inequality. So it's not because it's the absolute value. This is because it's an inequality and you divide it by a negative, so you have to switch the signs. And then negative 24 divided by negative 3 is positive 8. So that is how you isolate the absolute value. Now that the absolute value is isolated, you want to analyze the absolute value. And what you're doing is you're saying, well, this inside might be less than or equal to 8. So you just write it down without the absolute value. And then if it's a less than, it's going to be an and. Then over here, the second inequality, you're going to take this x minus 1 because you're analyzing it outside the absolute value. It also might be greater than, so you're going to change this sign, and then you're going to write negative 8. So there's three things that you have to remember. Number one, you have to remember the word. Number two, you have to change the inequality. And number three, you have to change the sign of that number there. Okay. Kind of tricky. You can get... Um, thing of it. All right, so now we're going to add 1 and you get x is less than or equal to 9 and add 1 and you get x is greater than or equal to negative 7. So what's this and mean? Well, the good news is is that these are going to behave very similarly, similarly every time you do them. So I'll give you a generalization in a minute, but we'll do it the long way. This is an and. Okay, so this x is less than or equal to 9 is a colored in circle at 9 and all the numbers less than 9. This x is greater than or equal to negative 7 is the negative 7 and then all the numbers greater than negative 7. And means intersection. So where is the overlap in these two solutions? Okay, they both have to be true. Okay, it has to be the intersection. So the intersection is between negative 7 and 9. And so now I can tell you that once you have your absolute value isolated, not at the beginning, if it's a less than, this is a classic and, it looks like a line segment. And your answer is going to look like that, between negative 7 and 9. Okay. All right, let's look at number 2. This is a less than, but it, you got to make sure it doesn't change. If there's any negatives involved, then it might change. Okay, so you have the absolute value, 2x minus 3w, 
is great is a, a, over a four is less than or equal to two. So the first thing we need to do is isolate the absolute value by multiplying both sides by four. So that's absolute value of two minus three w is less than or equal to eight. So now your absolute value is isolated. So we have two equations. Two at two minus three w is less than or equal to eight, and then you decide on the word. It's a less than, so it's an and. And then 2 minus 3w is, don't forget to change the inequality sign and change the a to a negative 8. So now we have to solve this. So there's a lot of negatives you have to be aware of. We're going to subtract 2, and that leaves you with negative 3w is less than or equal to 6, but then we're going to divide by negative 3. So that means you have to change this inequality because you divide it by a negative. All right, and over here, subtract 2, and you get negative 3w is greater than or equal to negative 10. Divide by negative 3, and you have to switch this inequality because you divide it by a negative, and negative 10 divided by negative 3 is positive 10 thirds. Okay, so we'll graph. Put the key numbers down, negative 2 and 10 thirds, which is 3 and a third. Colored in circle on the negative 2 to the right. Colored in circle at 10 thirds and to the left. And means intersection or overlap. So the intersection occurs between negative 2 and 10 thirds. Let's move to the next example. Absolute value of 4 minus 3c is greater than 6. Step 1 is done. It's already isolated. So now we can pull out the two inequalities. 4 minus 3c is greater than 6. Nothing to do on that first one except pull it out of the absolute value. Now let's decide on the word. It's greater or greater than. That's how I remember it. Greater than, less than. So greater than is an or. And then 4 minus 3c is less than negative 6. So you have to remember the word, change the sign, change the sign of the number. So now when we solve this, we get negative 3c is greater than 2. We're going to have to divide by a negative number again. So that inequality will change not because it's an absolute value, but because you divide it by a negative number. So you get c is less than negative 2 thirds. Or we subtract 4, we get negative 3c is less than negative 10. Notice I did not change my sign. It's not, you don't change it when you subtract or add. You change it when you divide by negative or multiply by negative. So here I am dividing by negative 3, so that c is greater than positive 10 thirds. All right, now watch what happens when you graph this. So negative 2 thirds on the left, 10 thirds on the right. C is less than two-thirds would be an open circle because it doesn't say equal to and to the left. All the numbers to the left of negative two-thirds. C is greater than ten-thirds would be an open circle on ten-thirds and to the right. Okay, And so there is no overlap, but that's okay because this is an or. And so or means the union. And what union means is you just collect all the solutions. If it's a solution in one, then you collect it. If it's a solution in the other, then you collect it. So I'm going to collect all these solutions from the first inequality and collect all these solutions from the second inequality. And so the answer would be negative infinity to negative two-thirds union ten-thirds to infinity. And I call that a classic OR. So a classic AND is a line segment. A classic OR, the arrows are going in opposite directions. So you can kind of check to make sure you didn't do anything wrong. Let's see if it behaves what, you know, what's typical. There are some exceptions, so we have to be careful. I'll show you. But we'll talk about those. All right, so let's try number four. You might be ready to try these, so you may want to pause the video and try all three and then check to see how you did. All right, so we need to isolate the absolute value. So we're going to divide by negative four. Okay, so the absolute value is still hanging around, but I just divided by a negative number, so you have to change that inequality. 
to the less than or equal to 3. So this is a less than problem. So now, two inequalities, 4 minus 3x is less than or equal to 3. And the word is and, because it's a less than. And then 4 minus 3, 4 minus x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, so you might want to put an understood negative 1 there. Okay, so this 4 is positive, so I'm going to subtract 4. Get negative 1x is less than or equal to negative 1. Then I divide by negative 1, which changes my inequality to greater than or equal to positive 1. Still an and. Alright, now we're going to subtract 4 over here. And get negative 1x is greater than or equal to negative 7. Divide by negative 1, so you have to change the sign. And it's an AND. So I'm just going to draw the one graph, 1 and 7. So AND means intersection, so X is greater than or equal to 1 would be this way. X is less than or equal to 7 is that way, and the intersection is the line segment in between the two. Alright, so that answer would be bracket 1 to 7. Next one, the absolute value is not yet isolated, so we're going to have to add 8 to both sides. And that gives you absolute value of 2c plus 6 is greater than 4. So now the absolute value is isolated. I'll pull this out. 2c plus 6 is greater than 4, or 2c plus 6 is less than negative 4. So the word is or. Change the inequality. Change the sign. So 2c is greater than negative 2, so c is greater than negative 1. Or 2c is less than negative 10, c is less than negative 5. Okay, so you put your numbers in the right order, make sure you do that. Negative 5 is to the left of negative 1. So c is less than negative 5 is a collection of answers, or means union. And c is greater than negative one is a collection of answers. So this answer here is negative infinity to negative 5 union negative 1 to infinity. That's a classic or. Okay, last one. So 4 plus 5 is 9. Can you do that? I can do that. So you have to subtract 4. You have to isolate the absolute value. So that's 5 times the absolute value of 2y minus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 4. Divide by 5. And absolute value of 2y minus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 4 fifths. And at this point, I know what the answer is. Because I remember the definition of absolute value. Absolute value is the distance a number is from 0. So it can never be negative but yet it's supposed to be greater than or equal to negative 4 fifths. What y values make that happen? So this is an exception. We can continue on with the problem. 2y minus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 4 fifths, or 2y minus 7 is less than or equal to positive 4 fifths. Okay? Add 7. Don't let the arithmetic bother you. The algebra says add 7. The calculator will do the arithmetic. So I'm going to add 7 and negative 4 fifths and get 6.2 or 31 fifths. Now I'm going to divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half. I don't need a calculator for that. You can use a calculator. 31 over 10. Or 2y is less than or equal to, let's add 7 to positive 4 fifths. Get 7.8 or 39 over 5. Multiply both sides by one half. And y is less than or equal to 39 over 10. Watch what's going to happen here. So 31 over 10, that's 3.1. I'll do this since we're going to graph it. 39 over 10 is 3.9. So if we graph this, this is an or. 
3.1 would go to the at 3.1 would go to the left of 3.9. Okay. Y is greater than or equal to 3.1 would be a colored insert on all the numbers forever and ever to the right of 3.1. Y is less than or equal to uh, 3.9 would be all the numbers left to the left of 3.9. And then it's an or, it's not an and. So it's not the intersection. It's a collection of all the answers. So if we collect all the answers, well, the solutions go to negative infinity based on the second one, all of these. And then the solutions go to positive infinity based on the first one. And you get the whole number line colored in. So the, the whole number line means that the answer is all real numbers, which I knew right here. If absolute value is going to be positive, then no matter what number I put in for y, uh, it's going to turn this positive. So all the, all the numbers in the universe I could put in for y, and they would be greater than this negative number. So that's one of the exceptions to the rule. And it can be tricky if you don't notice it because you might think, oh, it's an intersection. But that's an example of an all real number. Well, let me just give you the other thing that might happen. So if you have x plus 4 is less than or equal to negative 5, can that ever happen? If you put in 10, you get 14. 14 isn't less than negative 5. If you put in negative 10, negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. But what's the absolute value of negative 6? 6. So there is nothing that you can put in to this problem. So this one is no solution. So those are my those are your two exceptions to the classic and the classic or. This is a classic and. This is a classic or. The exceptions would if if you have an, if you isolate the absolute value and you have a negative, then it's either going to be all real numbers or no solution. All right. So let's look at this. Uh, word problem here. Since Maria wants to purchase papers for a garden, she determines that each paper is within a quarter inch of the stated length of 16 inches. She will line the papers end to end with no space between them to create a straight path in her garden. Write an absolute value inequality that can be used to find possible lengths of a paper. Okay, so each paper is within a quarter inch of the stated length of 16 inches. So let's let x equal the length in inches of one paper. And it says write an absolute value of inequality. So you have to do that, but you could think through this. I mean, if you were in Lowe's, you would think through this, right? You would say, well, it needs to be 16. It's supposed to be 16 inches. But it could be, it's with, as long as it's within a quarter inch, it passed quality control. So it could be 16.25 inches, or it could be 15.75 inches. That's what this problem is saying. Okay. So a lot of people that don't like algebra could figure that out. But we need to write an absolute value inequality. So absolute values, the inequalities are really helpful for, for this type of problem. So if it has to be within a quarter inch, then this is going to be a less than or equal to problem. Okay, so that is your tolerance level. And this absolute value over here, think about what we said. If it's 16.25, 16 minus 16.25 is negative 0.25. If it's 15.75, um, 16 minus 15.75 is 0.25. So what's going to go in here is going to be a minus. And it's going to be x, which is the length of the paper, minus 16, which is your target number. This, is, this would be the perfect paper. And that is your absolute value inequality. And so now that I've done this one example, what you want to do is file this away. And, you know, you can use this sort of template here. The tolerance level is going to go out here. The target number goes inside the absolute value. And you're going to use minus to figure that out.